Another message from Poseidon Arkantos. His creatures help the pirates. Father, they stole the trident! What? Yes, it was stolen during the fighting. Camos. There could not be a clearer sign, Arkantos. We are losing Poseidon's favor. We must act. I will go to Troy as you ask. I'm going to get that trident back on the way. Zethos! Take supplies aboard and get the men together. We're setting sail. Can I come? No, I need you here in case they come back. Don't worry. This errand will not take long. Caster, I'll be honest. I'm going deathless, and you have like 2 HP. You would just be a liability. Also, I wish you weren't my son, and I will not speak to you again for the rest of the game. Hello everybody, this is MinMaxer Gaming, and I'm here to answer the question, is it possible to beat the Age of Mythology campaign without losing a single unit? Before getting into the missions, I'll quickly give the rules and how I made sure that missions were deathless. So, rule 1, any unit that is controlled by me must not die, no exceptions. 2, hero knockouts count as deaths. 3, timed life units like the minion or mercenary count as deaths when they expire. 4, any herdable that dies while it is under my control, when it is blue, counts as a death. 5, save allies when possible slash within reason. 6. Phoenix Resurrection counts as a death. 7. Buildings do not count as units. 8. The run will be completed on hard difficulty. I'll talk about Titan difficulty a bit at the end of the run. There's a chance you might be asking, how do you truly know a mission is deathless when there isn't a score screen at the end like in StarCraft? The primary answer to that is, after I've recorded any of the 32 missions deathless, I will then go back and rewatch the entire footage and simply look if the population meter ever decreases seeing as every unit I use costs population. That way, if there are any off-screen deaths or a very well-hidden death in a particularly chaotic fight, I will immediately know and revisit the mission. As far as tracking it while I'm playing, I will almost always have my armies at a specific size with specific numbers of units that I keep track of. Age of Mythology, unlike some older RTS games, does not have a selection cap. And AOM shows you the exact amount of units in a group which I can use to keep track, and I usually don't continuously reinforce my armies once I attack. Campaign hero deaths are also very easy to track because you get a crystal clear audio notification telling you... A hero has fallen. If you have any serious doubts, I will also be uploading the full completion of each mission, so you can review any sketchy moments in full. With all of that out of the way, let's begin our journey. We start with the tutorial mission Omens. The objective of Omens is to survive pirate attack waves until reinforcements arrive. Having dodged the instant kill special of the enemy Kraken myth unit, doing the rest of the mission deathless isn't difficult. Though I could do this mission deathless with other strats, I decide to play it extra safe and wall off all the landing points and build towers which have an insane anti-ship multiplier. I give them the crenellations upgrade to easily snipe the ships as they move, and I usually sink them before they can even try to land and drop off. I hold that with ease until the reinforcement army arrives, which is completely unneeded seeing as the pirates can't even land. During the final pirate push, I use restoration along with repairing villagers to keep my docks safe from the krakens, and I get a smooth, deathless win. Bulame. The black sails are flee. It will take more than pirates to overrun Atlantis. In consequences, we need to destroy Kamos' town center and then beat up Kamos. This mission is a decent difficulty spike from mission 1. We actually need to jumpstart an economy and deal with attack waves which slow that economy down. Over the course of this run, I will be using myth units as often as I can. Myth units have immensely more HP and armor than human units in exchange for being more expensive. In a deathless run, I want to be making the units that are tanky, higher in quality, and lower in quantity. Myth units cover all three of these criteria. Even against other myth units, myth units are generally far more durable than human units, and there being less of them means that pullback micro and micro in general is easier to do. Because of this, on an age up, I will sometimes purely choose a minor god based on what myth units they let you train, regardless of what upgrades and god power they have. For this tech up, my choice of classical age god is obvious. My objective means that I have to be able to destroy buildings that are shooting at me while I'm attacking. Because this is still a bit of a tutorial mission with the highly restricted tech tree and choices, I have zero non-myth unit sources of crush damage unlocked this mission, which intuitively is the damage you are supposed to destroy buildings with. I could destroy them using hack damage, which is acceptable, but I only have hoplites and hippocon to do that with, which are far too fragile to risk attacking in. So I of course have to go Ares for his cyclops, which as myth units are expensive but very high HP and unlike the centaurs of Hermes, they deal high hack and crush damage. I decide to move out at 10 Cyclops. Sometimes I don't want to max out before attacking, because microing injured units back becomes more difficult when there are more units body blocking each other in. Once I attack in, I have to reload many times and poorly micro my heart out, because the enemy Anubites deal high damage, and just like the majority of myth units, they counterintuitively have a multiplier against other myth units. 
These factors, combined with their very small hitboxes and jump ability, mean that they have incredibly high damage density when they surround a Cyclops. Eventually, I get the ideal fight, bash down the town center, and use the Toxodes I have been training in the background to snipe down Kamos and win the mission. In scratching the surface, I need to destroy two Trojan docks. Almost immediately upon starting the mission, we run into a problem. In a scripted event, a bunch of allied ships get wrecked by these guys, and I have basically nothing to stop it with, seeing as it happens almost right at the beginning. I have to start thinking outside the box. I notice that the ships don't attack after a timer or anything like that, but instead only when I actually build the town center that the game tells me to, and the villagers I have are still allowed to build resource drop-off points, so I actually have infinite prep time and theoretically infinite prep money. However, the problem is, is that I start in the Archaic Age, which means I literally cannot build any combat units, seeing as I need a town center to advance to the Classical Age where I can build any offensive boats. With all of this noted, I set my plan into action. I gather up a hearty amount of each resource with my starting villagers, I throw down a boatload of docks around where my allied boats are, and I get my four starting Toxodes into position. I build the starting town center, mash the Classical Age button, and as I was hoping, the docks serve as excellent bait, pulling the aggro from many of the seed ships. Now my four Toxodes in the allied trireme have to beat a heavy seed ship which hard counters them. I need to attack the ship with my Toxodes immediately. Basically the instant appears, because otherwise it aggros onto the allied trireme which would melt under its fire. Then I need to pull back hurt Toxodes and whittle down the ship until it dies. As this is happening, Classical Age pops and I immediately use Hermes' Ceasefire God Power. During this, I crank out a bunch of Triremes for my mass docks and go heroic with Dionysus. Unfortunately, it is essentially impossible to save both allied ships, so I settled for saving Ajax's ship. Two Toxodes is simply not enough to beat a heavy siege ship. Luckily, these ships don't belong to me, so it's not a run killer. I only have to save allies within reason. I can't directly control the actions of my allies, so I'm not responsible for saving every single one. Once the ceasefire ends, my triremes kill off the enemy ships, I wait for heroic, and I smash the docks with Scylla, which as water myth units have no real counter. A fine plan is a mission where I need to destroy a well-defended large gate. I start this mission off without a source of gold or any starting gold. The mission is designed to give you different options for gold, such as using a transport ship to claim a gold mine on a small island, but I opt to just load up my starting Heliopolis siege tower with hoplites and attack the nearby enemy gold mine. Once I secure that gold, I use my Heliopolis to single-handedly take down a stray enemy town center, which I will eventually take over and use to mine even more gold. The Heliopolis has insane pierce defense and very high HP, so I can actually leave it AFK while I do other things. The first attack wave comes for me, and I have essentially nothing except for my starting heroes and six Hippocon, but I can kite the attack wave into fighting under my high pierce damage town center, which helps just enough for everything to barely live. After dealing with the attack wave, I'm going to tech into the Heroic Age. For my god of choice, I am of course going to go for Apollo. Apollo is an example of the perfect Deathless God. His god power, myth unit, and upgrades are all very desirable for a Deathless run. His Temple of Healing upgrade makes my temples act as healing fountains, which is insanely important to me. It is the only real source of healing that Greeks get at all, and it means that when a unit of mine gets beat up, I do not have to permanently take it out of commission and hide it. I take the town center I had previously conquered along with his gold mine and I start building up my army, which is going to consist of Apollo's Manticores and Athena's Minotaurs. Minotaurs are just standard bulky bruiser myth units, and Manticores have a ranged AoE quill spray attack that is perfect against the dense clumps of small human units that I am fighting. For the Mythic Age, I tech up through Hera for the Monstrous Rage upgrade, which makes all my myth units deal 25% more damage across the board. This will be amazing for my myth unit only army. At some point, Troy hits me with an attack wave using the Bronze God Power, which gives a large armor buff to human units. But at this point, my army is almost fully online, so thwarting it deathless is no problem. As I get closer to maxing out, I build a healing station of three temples in the middle of the map. When I'm happy with my army, I start moving out to the Trojan Gate I need to destroy. When I move in and start attacking, Troy drops a ceasefire. I use the time to cast Apollo's Underworld Passage to create a portal to my healing station, and I use it to bring myself the Bellerophon Hero, whose jump ability will help me snipe enemy catapults and nearly insta-kill enemy myth units. Once Ceasefire ends, I take an excellent fight, with my Minotaurs getting nice surface area, and my Manticords shooting uninterrupted and Bellerophon getting nice leaps. I use my Restoration and Lightning Storm so I can push through the gate directly without needing to heal any of my forces up so that Troy doesn't get a chance to rebuild the defenders. My Lightning Storm blocks Troy from using the one they use when the gate gets damaged, I bash the gate, and I win. It's my <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Πρόσεχε. Τη μάχη. Πρόσταγμα. Βούλο. Βούλο. Ισβολή. Καλό. Ισβολή. Μάχη. Just Enough Rope is a standard wipe out the enemy mission, but it starts with another allies are supposed to die bit, only this time it happens immediately, and once again it is physically impossible to save all allies, my god powers don't work on them, I tried. I could go crazy trying to see how many allies I can save here, but I'm going to save my energy for allied segments that are less RNG heavy and BS, so I only focus on making sure that none of my blue troops die. Once that's finished, I grab Ajax and we go to our starting base. I save a villager from ruining his vegan diet, corral my pigs, and start on my economy. My base is chock full of pigs that I can't use due to my herdable rule, so my economy is going to have a slow start. This mission is just kind of brutal. The attack waves are terrifying and frequent, it's balanced around me having a bunch of food I can't use, and it pre-starts me with Dionysus as my heroic age god, which really screws me over because I have no way to heal the majority of my units. You may have noticed me trying my best to use my campaign heroes like Arcantos to tank the enemy attack waves. This is because the special campaign heroes like Ajax, Odysseus, Arcantos, and the others all have passive health regeneration. So no matter what, if they survive a fight, they will eventually heal to full without me having to do anything. Unlike most of the units from Warcraft 3 or the Zerg from Starcraft, almost every unit in AOM has zero regeneration, and needs to be healed by something special like a god power, special upgrade, or special unit. Even the viable heroes that the Greeks have, like Hippolyta or Bellerophon, don't have regen. Only the special campaign heroes. After dealing with the first attack wave, I send my injured Hippocon from the first fight to Hippocon Heaven, and I begin upgrading my towers. My game plan is to get a strong tower and wall set up, seeing as towers and walls are durable and can actually be healed through repair. Defending using an army without healing is by definition not scalable for the long term. I eventually decide to actually send all my Hippocon to safety, because even though my heavy hoplites aren't as fast, they can be garrisoned, so it's far easier to save low health ones. I need to survive until the Mythic Age, because in the Mythic Age I'll tech up into Hephaestus. His myth unit is the Colossus, sporting an absolutely ridiculous 1000 HP, high armor, 50 crush damage, a hidden 20 hack damage, and the ability to eat trees or gold mines to heal itself, making it the only healable unit I have except for Arcantos and Ajax. The Colossus is also one of the very few myth units that gets two specific upgrades, and there are tankiness upgrades, exactly what I need. Upgrading into Silver Colossus adds 200 HP, and upgrading into Gold Colossus brings the hack armor to 60% and adds another 200 HP for 1,400 total HP, making the Gold Colossus the tankiest trainable unit in the game, bar none. This unit is truly a Deathless Runner's best friend. Once my economy hits a solid footing, I wall off my entire base. I decide to make squishy Toxodes as the DPS to support my Colossi. Eventually, I can start using my Colossi to help defend attack waves, which are increasing in intensity and starting to bring in siege weapons. Once I feel ready, I begin setting my late game plan in motion. I intended to crawl forward with walls, park my massive Toxodes behind proxied walls, and then use my Colossi to clear the way up ahead for me to plant a further ahead wall. In reality, it doesn't quite turn out that way. The Colossus do the majority of the work, and wall crawling is more awkward and difficult than I expected, so I stop wall crawling when I get closer to the enemy base. The Toxodes are actually most useful for sniping the enemy goats. I need to kill them before they become my responsibility. You might call this approach bloodthirsty, but those red colored bastards would slit my throat and butcher me if they had the chance. I use restoration and then bronze to ensure my units survive, and I smash through the base and get my deathless win. <laughs> I hope this works part 1 is a cool mission where you need to protect your base from raids while saving up wood for and building the Trojan horse. I don't want to deal with constant massive attack waves anymore so I'm going rush mode. I put all of my villagers on lumber and I train absolutely nothing except for a couple of villagers and the only wood I spend is on my only upgrade, crenellations. Crenellations makes towers hit moving targets consistently and it gives them a 2 times damage multiplier against cavalry. Because I have very well placed, pre-upgraded towers and the initial raids are literally only cavalry, crenellations is the perfect upgrade for this mission. I'm given 2 Liability Hoplites, 3 Toxodes, and 4 Prodromos, all with few to no upgrades, while the enemy raids with Champion Cavalry. Despite that, my forces are more than enough. My heroes tank and bait the raiders into towers, and Prodromos being the anti-cavalry hard counter unit do immense damage to the enemy, even with the massive upgrade lead. This mission has a mechanic where once the raiders are beaten up enough, they start running away to their base, and if they make it, they call in a massive, actually diverse attack wave at you. Thankfully, with decent blocking from my units and the pinpoint tracking of my towers, I can kill the raiders before they escape. Once I hit a thousand wood, I transfer all my villagers to work on the Trojan horse, and I'll garrison them if raiders start attacking them. 
On the third wave, one of the raiders gets away, but I still have Bolt, so I get max value out of Bolt. On the fourth wave, I take another dominant fight using Restoration. However, a raider manages to escape. But, because of my rush start, the Trojan horse finishes well before anything can happen, and I have an easy, deathless win. Do not let the scouts return to Troy, or we will be attacked. I hope this works part 2 is another very cool mission where you attack the Trojans from the inside. I clean out the patrolling night watch with my heroes and rescue 4 Heliopoli. I use them to pre-destroy 2 of the 3 fortresses which are virtually unguarded right now. Then I destroy the gate that is intended to let Agamemnon's army inside. I use restoration to tank through the lightning storm that Troy uses in retaliation. Agamemnon's army is really badass, it's a shame I'm not going to use it, because instead I'm going to call in the Hammer of Dawn from High Orbit. disappearing. The surface of Endion has been cleansed of life. It is over. Whoopsie daisies, wrong game. But that was basically a representation of how powerful I feel when I get to drop two back-to-back -back meteor showers on top of the last objective fortress, which is heavily, heavily guarded. All from the comfort of my gamer chair, as I don't even have to lift a finger to do any deathless micro on the mega army, because I can just sit back and click on the fortress twice and watch it and its surroundings explode. More Bandits is a no-build mission where you push through the bandit-captured town of Iaklos to rescue Chiron and allied militia groups. Ugh, <sighs> I've already let allies die in the past. What kind of a deathless runner am I? Maybe I'll never be able to save all allies. No, I'm stronger than this. I will protect my people. In this mission, I am determined to not let a single ally die. The first segment is a joke. I fight through some weak human and wadget myth units and I rescue my first two sets of centaurs, along with the Heliopolis. Any militia units that I rescue are liabilities, which I immediately send to a corner. Soon after, I run into my first serious roadblock. Squishy ally militia that I can't control, who are in front of a big enemy squad and worst of all, they run in the most bizarre directions possible. After many failed attempts and some testing, I realized that there are conditions that need to be met for these various groups of green militia to come under my command. I originally thought that the condition here was wiping out the entire enemy group, but I realized that actually the only unit you have to kill here is the Wadget, and then I'm free to run the militia properly and protect them with my forces. Even though it is very squishy, sniping with my heroes or even using the Centaur special attack is too slow to save the militia, so this is the perfect time to use Bolt. So I come in from above, use Bolt, and I succeed! Also, I forgot to upgrade my centaurs earlier, but with the Sylvan lore upgrade, my centaur polymarks are more than fast enough to dodge arrows from the towers, so I can mitigate some serious damage by just dodging arrows with one centaur while everything else attacks. I push through the rest of the bandits here, kill the enemy barracks, and claim this area as mine, giving me a resource boost and control of the production buildings here. With my newfound resources, I build some hydras as my frontline tank slash bruiser. The hydra's special ability is that the more kills it gets, the more heads it grows, each head giving another 20 hack damage. 
it can go up to 5 heads. So starting from its default 1 head, it can go from 20 hack damage to an insane 100. Normally, I consider them pretty bad, because they usually die before they can grow a good amount of heads, and it's surprisingly difficult and obnoxious to get Hydras to deal the killing blow instead of your other units. But Hydras are my tankiest option by far, and seeing as this run is deathless, they should be able to grow some heads and deal some nice damage. I clear to the next district and I am met with another set of three allied militia running from an army. Luckily they run in a better, more straight direction. Unluckily, it seems like the entire squad chasing them needs to be wiped. I get a good concave that also blocks the militia from running somewhere stupid. I eat the aggro and rescue the men with no losses. There is another set of three to rescue. I eat as much aggro as I can and use restoration when things get dicey. For some reason, on this group specifically only one of the militia joins me. But it doesn't matter, seeing as I've basically won at this point. From here, I just kill the rest of the bandits, build some siege with my newly gained fortress, guard it with my tanky hydras, and snipe the stronghold guarding Chiron with relative ease. And I can say with great relief that this mission was truly deathless, both for me and my allies. Bad News is a mission where your forces are split between two bases that are initially stranded from each other, with the intent that you meet up after clearing upwards from both bases. Defending two bases from powerful attack waves with diverse compositions including Siege is very annoying. I want to end this mission as quickly as possible, and luckily I can steal a strategy from the speedrun, and modify it to suit my own needs. As far as I can tell, the designers tried to make it so that you can't turbo cheese the mission, but it turns out that they left a tiny sweet spot where you can just barely fit an underworld in on top of one of the fortresses, and then teleport directly to them and snipe them down. By the way, the speedrunner on screen is a YouTuber called Boyt, and he's the key figure in keeping the legacy of AOM alive. He organizes tournaments, showcases mods, does variety content like a speedrun, and casts tons of pro matches. His speedrun is excellent and showcases a bunch of professional tier play unlike me and super creative strats like me. He is also a walking encyclopedia of the game, and is probably the most knowledgeable AOM player out there, so you should definitely check him out. Anyways, I tech up through Apollo, and then Hephaestus for a Colossus and Underworld. Then I set up an Underworld at the specific sweet spot that puts me right on top of the fortresses. And then I try to get cute, and use the Colossus ability to eat trees to clear a path to the other fortress, but turns out they can just walk through the top part. I smack the fortresses down, and as the Colossi drop a bit low in the fadeout screen, we pretend that when the screen goes black, Arcantos casts Ceasefire and teleports the Colossi back out. <laughs> Revelation is a tough, no-build mission where you quickly push through to a ram and then bash away at it while simultaneously defending yourself against enemy waves coming from multiple directions. My first order of business is doing the optional objectives. I need to close off two of the reinforcement paths as fast as I can. I push forward while having my heroes tank against the myth units. I rescue Anemia and Lion and I attack the first set of boulders that collapses and blocks reinforcements. I do the same for the other set while rescuing three Medusae. These Medusas are absolutely critical for this mission. I had them available in mission 4, but I didn't use them, because their special was useless to me. This is because their special is a high cooldown, single target, instant kill, stone gaze ability. In mission 4 I was fighting masses of small human units. Picking off a handful doesn't do much. But in this mission the majority of what I'm facing are heavy myth units and every stone gaze I can get onto a full health cyclops, manticore, or chimera is a very impactful amount of HP and DPS I am removing from the enemy. I kill the army guarding the ram while using restoration and then I get to work. The ram, like most buildings, has extremely high pierce armor and moderate hack armor. This makes my distribution of attackers and defenders pretty obvious. My 12 centaurs and 3 medusa deal pierce damage, making them useless against the ram, and they have a 2 times multiplier against other myth units, which is primarily what will be attacking me. My 18 hoplites and nemean lion deal hack damage, and, fun fact, Zeus actually has a god passive which makes all infantry deal 50% extra damage to buildings, not to mention my hoplites would get completely trashed by the enemy myth units. Including the enemy cyclops, who have a grab and throw special attack that not figuratively, but literally, instant kills hoplites, even when they have bronze on them. My heroes do deal hack damage, but the enemy waves are an infinitely greater threat than running out of time, and I need the hero's anti-myth unit properties to stand a chance against the waves. This part is so insanely difficult that it is the only time in this entire run of 32 missions where I very seriously consider going down to moderate difficulty. There's no cheeses, creative strats, or AI abuse I can do. I just have to micro my heart out and pray, and get the stupid heroes to stop going out of position to attack the ram. The only difference in my 20th approach from the first is that I really put into perspective how insanely tanky the campaign heroes are against myth units. Not only do heroes take a massive 4 times less damage from myth units, 
but they also have immunity from special attacks, they regenerate, have a massive 50% hack and pierce armor before any upgrades, and they come with bronze armor this mission. All of this puts their effective HP against myth units in the thousands. I need to keep them even further in front than I already am. Ideally, they should be eating nearly all of the enemy myth unit damage and aggro and letting my other myth units finish them from safety. In this mission, reinforcements will periodically come from the starting area of the mission. I consider a lot of these reinforcements to be liabilities because they are squishy and Gargarensis starts putting up large armies on the path for my reinforcement to get to the ram. However, I eventually realize that the first wave of Hippicon, where I need to use Bolt to kill the Phoenix Gargarensis sends after them anyways, do need to be sent to the ram. They can get to the ram right before the reinforcement path becomes blocked and their damage is essential for finishing the mission before I get overwhelmed. At this point, I also switch my hero placements. I have Chiron guard the south, and Ajax and Arcantos guard the west. This is because a bunch of Manticores start coming from the west, and Chiron's pierce damage is much less useful against Manticores than on Cyclops. As the rest of my reinforcements arrive, I huddle them safely into a corner, and I use the 4 Centaur reinforcement to snipe down the second Phoenix that gets sent for my reinforcements. With all of this, my heroes soaking beautifully, and a lightning storm on the massive wave of villagers sent to repair the ram, I win the mission deathless and I breathe a huge sigh of relief. In retrospect, this mission would have been easier if I had used Restoration at a better time and instead used Bronze to break through to the ram faster, but even then, this mission still would have been very difficult. We've done it! Thank Poseidon! Strangers is a no-build mission where you navigate a labyrinth peppered with enemy myth units. You are given special invisible Hades shades which can self-destruct to one-hit kill any enemy unit. This is a deathless run, so I use them to walk forward and give me vision instead. Despite shades being banned for obvious reasons, in a total 180 from last mission, 90% of this mission is a total joke, which can essentially be completed by just attack moving your heroes forward. There would be nothing else to say, but the goddamn Kraken from mission 1 have come back for revenge, with an instant kill special, 800 health, and being faster than the boats I need to use to cross the sticks. Thankfully I can bolt the first one, but I still just keep getting chased down and eaten. I need to take advantage of the fact that Age of Mythology AI is kind of janky, and oftentimes enemy units will lock on to one specific unit and keep chasing it, even if it's being pelted by other units. Many RTS have this in some form, but AOM's AI in particular seems to chase locked on units to ridiculous extremes. After many resets, I get the perfect kite with my bait boat, and my 7 other boats plus Chiron just barely manage to burst it down before it chases down my boat. If these boats didn't have a hidden anti-myth unit multiplier, this run would probably be impossible. For the last Kraken, I can land Chiron on the other side, and grab its attention away from the ferry, and from there he can win the 1v1. Now there's nothing left to talk about. Or is there? Because I freaking get attacked on the water again by a horde of strong water myth units. Thankfully I have all my god powers pocketed, so I can just cover my boats in cheese whiz and win the fight. I don't know why they decided to make the water part this cursed, but the rest of the mission is back to being a joke, and just for fun I use Lightning Storm to trivialize the large clump of myth units at the end. In later videos I will do dedicated thank yous and mentions of people that inspired me or helped me, but I'd be remiss to not mention Giant Grant Games in this first video. There are definitely some stylistic resemblances to his videos, and he's definitely my number one inspiration for making this. I feel like most RTS gamers have heard of him, but just in case you haven't, you're missing out. He does insane challenge runs, discusses RTS concepts, and is a vital part of creating the new generation RTS, Zero Space. He primarily does StarCraft 2 content, but he also does stuff with a huge variety of games including Warcraft 3, StarCraft 1, and even Pokemon at one point. Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. I have all the footage ready for the Egyptian and Norse campaigns, I just need to edit it, so stay tuned for parts 2 and 3. I have a bunch of wacky strategies I've yet to show you and I can't wait. I'm sorry about the lack of polish, this is my first video as you can probably tell, but I hope it was entertaining nonetheless. I've learned a bit from my mistakes, so the next video should be an improvement. In particular, I'll try to drastically improve my audio. If you have editing tips, especially involving audio, or any other thoughts, comment them down below. Thanks for watching! Our task is complete! The lost relics are returned!